This is Math 151. We're going to take a peek at 4.2, uh, linear approximation and differentials. So let's take a look at this function f of x equals 1 over x. And I know that that, you know, part of that function looks like, uh, you know, just a curve like that. And let's say that we're here where x is 2. Now, we, we know that I could um, find a tangent line for, for the line that goes through that point. Right, so I could have this tangent line, this nice straight line that just touches it on the way by, touches the function on the way by, and goes on by. Now, if you notice really close, like if you can imagine zooming into this, if we get in here super close, um, they almost look like they're the same. That tangent line, if we're really close to 2, is a really good approximation for that function, 1 over x. I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit here. Well, maybe I'm not. I'm going to try to exaggerate it a little bit. So this could be at any point, but I've but I've chosen two. Um, like let's say I, I I shifted over to two point one. Now the actual value is here, right? It has that height. But notice this point right here that's on the tangent line. That that output would be a pretty close approximation to the output, the actual value at the function. So thinking about that, that's the idea of linear approximations. And this little this little spot, this little area that's in here, that's the error, right? That's like how far off we are in this estimate. And sometimes it's close enough. It's good enough. Uh, we're going to do this linear approximation for 2.1 in this function. First off, we would find the um, the tangent line, and so I would I would take the uh, I'm going to do it at a equals equals 2. So I'd have to find the slope at 2, right? So I'd, I'd find the slope of uh, the function. I'd find the derivative of the function at, at 2. And then I would plug that into kind of like a line formula, right? Like um, that's my slope. So that's like my m of my line. And then I could say x minus a, and that would equal y uh, minus the output f of a. So, so if a is 2, notice like this is a, this is the point a f of a, whoops, sorry, right here. And so that's like this, y minus the y part is equal to the slope times x minus the x part, right? And this is, this would be, this is what I'm estimating, but I'm estimating here, like say at the 2.1, in this case, um, x would be 2.1. So notice I have this change in x, which is about 0.1 here. I have the slope, and then I could clean this up a little bit. If I just want to have it output an answer, uh, I'm going to add that f of a to both sides. So I could write this as, uh, I'll write it up here, f of a plus the derivative at a times x minus a. And what this is is, this is a linear approximation, so we could say L of x. This is a linear approximation of the function um, of x at a, and a is my 2, where I'm basing it from. And notice if I get really far away from here, my error is going to be bigger, right? So I really only want to do this pretty close to 2. Let's get a linear approximation of 2.1. So not the actual value, right? Like f of 2.1 we could do that on a calculator, 1 divided by 2.1, that's going to give us some answer. But if I just wanted to have a decent approximation of it, I'm going to use this relationship. So I'm going to need uh, a couple of things. A is 2. A is the spot where I'm, pro where I'm um, approximating from. So I'm going to need f of a, which is 1 half. Let's see, f prime, the derivative of 1 over x is uh, negative 1 over x squared, as you know. So I'm going to also need that. So negative 1 over 2 squared is negative 1 fourth. That's the slope of the tangent line. And what else do I really need? I don't really need anything else, I don't think. My approximation, my linear approximation at x is f of a, so 1 half, 
plus the slope of the tangent line. So I could say minus one fourth times x minus a. So notice what I have here is um, the, the y value at a, and this is how far off I am from x. So in this case, I'm estimating it for 2.1. So I'm going to find the linear approximation for 2.1. It'll be 1 half minus 1 fourth times 2.1 minus 2. Uh, notice when I do this, this is just a 0.1. So 1 half minus 1 fourth times 0.1. That value in there is my, my change in x, how far I've come from where I'm centering my uh, tangent line, right? From where my tangent line hits it. That point 0.1 is that distance right there. And if that number's small, this is going to be a more, usually a more reasonable estimate. So let's keep going from here. Do, do, do. This is uh, 0.475. Now, here's what's convenient about this. I didn't have to go like 1 divided by 2.1, which, you know, you might argue is, is less work than this, or you might argue is more work than this. But this is an approximation, right? This is, the actual, this is the height here on the tangent line. The actual value, uh, 1 divided by 2.1, four, I'm pretty close, right? 475 is my approximation, and that's a little lower than the actual value, which you would expect, 476. So if I were to go this, uh, the actual value minus that approximation, that would tell me what my actual error is, how far off I was. But if I'm comfortable with two decimal places accuracy, that's a good approximation for it. So this right here is our, is our linear approximation rule. And we can say that this is an approximation um, of x at a. So we're, uh, we have another function f of x is the square root of x, and we're going to use it to approximate what the square root of 9.1 would be. So let's uh, do this at at 9, right? Because there's, there's some things that are pretty easy to find here. f of 9 is 3. Uh, 9.1 is just a little ways away from 9. The output when, f is not, when x is 9 is 3. So we expect our answer to be, well, who knows? Reasonably close to three, I guess. Uh, let's see what we can do. So we, we have um, the function, the value of the function. This is our f of a piece right here. We're going to need the derivative of this. So, uh, you know, that's x to the 1 half, which is 1 over 2 root x. The derivative at 9 is 1 over 2 times root 9, which is 1 sixth. That's this part. There's our f of a. There's our f prime of a. And I think we have everything we need. So our linear approximation is f of a is 3 uh, plus the slope times x minus that a value. We, we were centering it at 9. So there's our uh, the the equation of the tangent line. Just to get a picture of what's going on here. Um, square root looks like this. Let's say that x is 9 here. We're going out to 9.1. And we know that the tangent line will look like that. We're going to find this value because it's an approximation. And it should be actually higher, right? A little larger than the, uh, a little greater than the, than the actual value. So let's see what happens. Uh, so we do this at 9.1. So the linear approximation at 9.1, 3 plus 1 sixth. And so notice that this becomes our change in x, right? This is like this distance. Uh, sorry, this is this distance right here from 9 to 9.1. And if I put that into my calculator, I get uh, 3.016 repeating. So 3.016666 uh, is forever. So that is the y value here, right? Like that's, that's the height. That's what I've just found. That's my linear approximation at 9.1.
Now, if I if I go to check it, uh, square root of nine point one, I put that into my calculator, and I get uh, three point zero one six six, and then two zero oh, six two six, and it keeps going. So notice that like this is actually really accurate. One two three four, one two three four out four decimal places. That's a that's a pretty darn good approximation. Now, if I wanted to try it out at like 15, right? Like I wanted to get out here to 15, what's going to happen is uh, in most cases, these are going to diverge quite a bit. I'm going to have a lot of error. So I could say, boom, boom, this at 15, but it's not very sound. I'm not even going to do the whole thing because uh, it's way off. My error is going to be really big. If I want to do this for 15, I might get closer to something that's easy to find the square root of, like 16, right? Because then, then I can find the square root of 16 really easily. The idea here is to make this an easier calculation than this is. And if we didn't have a calculator to go square root of uh, 9.1, we, we'd do a lot of work to get this number. Notice this is a lot less work computationally without a calculator than that is. Again, this is linear approximation. So our function is the cube root of, of x. And so we're going to set ourselves at 8 because we want to find approximation for 8.1. In other words, if we were to go the cube root of 8.1, instead of shoving it into my calculator and getting the exact answer, I'm going to get an approximate answer by using this, this linear approximation method. I'm going to center myself at 8. So a is 8. Uh, f of 8 is the cube root of 8, which is 2. That's pretty straightforward. I'm going to need the derivative. Um, cube root is the one-third power. So this is the same as uh, one-third times x to the negative two-thirds. And that means f prime of 8. Let's see. 8 to the negative two-thirds. That's um, 1 over 8 to the two-thirds. A third is a, is a cube root. So that is a 2, and if I square that, it's 4. So it's 1 fourth. Oh, and then that's times a third, right? I was evaluating just this part, and that's a third. So it's 1 twelfth altogether. Okay, uh, good. I have all my pieces. So my linear approximation then, f of a, so 2, plus the slope times the value I'm approximated at minus... Um, the x value where the tangent line hits the function. And I'm doing this for 8.1, so I'm going to plug it in 8.1. Linear approximation of 8.1 at 8. And that's 2.083 repeating. Notice again, I want to emphasize this 0.1, that's the difference. That's my, that's my change in x, how far away I am from 8 to make my approximation. So uh, 2.083, so that is my approximation at 8.1. And that wasn't too much work computationally. Just to see how far off we are, um, and this is going to take my calculator, cube root of 8.1. Let's see, that is about, I'll go out some decimal places, 2.082988. Man, that is close, right? It gets out to here. And this even rounds up from that 9. So it's, it's a really good estimate. And it's a really good estimate because I'm pretty close to 8. If I was even closer, like if I did tried like say uh, 8.01 instead of 0 0.1 here, that'd be a 0 0.01. I'd, I'd, I'd even have less error. Okay, so we are going to do this again. Uh, sine of x is our function. And we're going to get an approximation for the sine of 62 degrees. And if I think about 62 degrees, 62 degrees, if I think about that in radians, uh, 62 pi over 180. Um, I'm going to go back and forth probably between radians and degrees. I prefer working in radians. So we are going to need a couple of things we're going to need. Uh, so let's center this thing then at 60 degrees, right? Because sine of 60 degrees... Um, aka pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So there's our f of a value. 
The derivative of sine, as we know, is cosine. So f prime at a, a is 60 degrees, pi over 3, is 1 half. So we have our linear approximation, which is f of a, the value at 60 degrees, right, where we're centering it at, at pi over 3. So root 3 over 2 plus the slope at pi over 3 times x minus, um, and I'll use um, pi over 3. All right, so if I want to do this for 62 degrees, that's the same as saying um, 62 pi over 180. So root 3 over 2 plus 1 half, let's see, 62 pi over 180 minus pi over 3. All right, I'm going to move this up here a little bit. Uh, so 62 pi over 80 minus uh, pi over 3. Well, pi over 3 is the same as uh, 60 pi over 180. So 62 of them minus 60 of them is 2 of them. 2 pi over 180. And notice then that boop boop. So this leaves me uh, uh, root 3 over 2 plus pi over 180. So there's my, uh, there's an approximation for it. If I put that into my calculator, it's going to spit out, uh, let's see, about 0.8834769. That's my approximation. So according to my linear approximation, uh, sine of 62 degrees is about that. If I do the actual value, just to see how far off I am, so sine of 62 degrees. I get about 0.8829475, blah, 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 blah. Super close. Again, you know, two decimal places for sure. This rounds up to three, so pretty close. Um, these linear approximations are giving me a good estimate. So let's take a peek at this, this linear approximation equation that we have been dealing with. And let's look at some pieces here. We know that this is, if we think about the, the tangent line, this is how much it's moved over, right? There, there's our x minus a, and that's kind of a change in x right there. And then we have some kind of a change in y here to get back up on the line. And if I really think about that function, uh, the slope of that function, that's, uh, we write that two ways. We write it as the function of a, we can also write it as, as dy over dx. So and I'm going to change this to an x. So if we start thinking about this as, as slope, as how it's changing, we can do a little multiplication. Let's multiply both sides by dx. So what is this telling us? Um, we have the slope of the line, right? How steep it is. So as this um, goes over, we have some change in x. We, uh, it goes up, we have some change in y. Like if this is 1, we've gone up the whole slope. But another thing that we can say is if we go over d of x, like if we go over this amount and we multiply it by that steepness, because it's a ratio, by that slope, it gives us this right here. Um, these are the changes in the tangent line. These are the changes in the approximation, and we call them differentials. dy, dx, change in x, change in y, those are um, the differentials. Now, if I, if I draw in like I was doing some approximation of some function, let's say my function went like this. Notice that like my change in x is the same, but my change in y on the function is actually different. This value right in here, right, like this actual change in y minus the dy, that's my error. That's how far off I am in my, in my approximation. So we have these, um, these differentials. That being said, make a little boundary here. 
So I have some function, y equals x squared plus 2x, and I've been asked to find uh, the differential, dy, and evaluate it when x is 3 and the and dx is, is 0.1. So first off, let me differentiate both sides. So this is just that. This These are x's. They are in terms of x. So if I'm differentiating in terms of x, I don't need to do any sort of chain rule type thing. This just becomes 2x plus 2. This is change in y respect to, to change in x is equal to that. If I want to find just that differential, I'm going to multiply both sides by that dx. So that dy is that. Notice this right here is the slope of the line. Right? That's what this is because this was the derivative of the function. If I take the slope of the line and I multiply by dx, the, the, the width, how far it's gone over, multiply by the slope, I get the height. That's what this is telling me. And so then I can evaluate it when x is 3 and uh, dx is 0.1. So I'll just plug in then. So uh, 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 times 0.1 is 0.8. So that would be its value right there. Again, the connection I want you to make is when I write this, it's this. The slope of the line times the change in x, the differential, is the change in y on the slope line. You know, just one thing, like let's say my slope was 1 half. So I know that this goes rise over run over 2 up 1, right? So that's the, that's the ratio at which this changes. If I told you my change was 10 in x, so I have 1 half times 10, you know proportionally this has to be a 5. That's, that's just what we're doing with these differentials. All right, give that homework a try. Post questions in the forum. Message me with them as well. Good luck with it.